Hey everybody, welcome to another Professionally Incorrect. I'm Liam Clisham, and today we're gonna take a look at how to make the easiest effing Mylar balloon setup ever in Houdini. It's gonna be a quick one. So inside Houdini here, I've got three different options loaded up that we'll take a look at, mostly just to show you how important the mesh base is in getting your look for the Mylar balloons, uh, depending on the shape, the size, all of that. A lot of it factors into what we're going to end up with here. So uh, at the top here, just a simple EPS of a flower that I found somewhere, probably Noun Project, uh, this F from the font sop, and then simple shapes from uh, labs. We'll, we'll do a triangle or a star or something too. So just going to switch between these as we go through. Right now, I'm just set to our first input here and then throwing down a match size to get everything to line up in the center here. Nice and pretty like. And since we are bringing in the EPS, I'm converting it to polygons here, just as good measure. I've found that it's kind of hit or miss whether or not you need to actually convert. Um, better safe than sorry. And then this taking a whole sop and getting rid of that hole there in the center, remeshing it. And it's kind of hard to see here because it's coming in with blue for some reason. Um, so I've got a color sop down here. Oh, there it is. Next one. Ha! Color sop right here. Um, just to fix that weird blue issue. There's no color coming in, I don't think. Oh, there is color coming in. Well, that's why it's being weird. Let's clear that out. Uh, attribute, delete. Not sure why that came in from Illustrator. I've never had that happen before. And vertex. Primitive? That's a primitive one. Hmm, interesting. OK, so that should fix that. Let me turn that off. Yes, we're back to normal. OK. Anywho, so uh, here's what I'm talking about with mesh quality. So I'm remeshing this over here, and element size right there is getting our density. The lower you go, the higher the mesh density. So if I go up to 0.1, you'll see triangles get a lot bigger. This is smoothing these out. So if I set it to point mode and go back down to say 01 here, you can see that sometimes you get weird bunching like that if you don't play with your smoothing. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I guess this one's not actually smoothing. It's full iterations of the calculation. So yeah, set that back there. For just speed purposes, I'm going to set this up to 0.25, like so, for the time being. And then we're going in and creating a group. So if you're new to Houdini, coming from C4D, that world, uh, these are just like point selections or selection tags over in uh, C4D land. And this one is set up in a way that it gets all the outside edges here automatically. So include by edges, and then anything that's unshared, like so, and we get all that. Uh, knowing that I want to have just a little bit more room to work with along the edges, what I'm doing here is throwing down a group expand and expanding these points. So getting the front stitch group here, which is also the base group here, and expanding it by two steps. So that's how it is originally, one step, two steps. And this will be where everything is pinned as we move forward. So. Uh, it's actually weld, but I keep in my mind that it's like you're pinning stuff together. Uh, so this is a mirror, just moving this up here. And then this is the original one back here as the rear. And this is a group rename, and it's doing exactly what you think. So this is just running a little command saying, find anything that's with the word front in the name. So right here, front stitch and replace it with new name. So if I middle click here, you'll see we have front stitch there. If I click here, I've got a rear stitch. And then this comes through with the mirror, so it, it keeps the front stitch information as we mirror that. Um, and then I'm getting rid of the original one because we've got it over here. We don't need it. So merge those two together like so. And you can ignore this reverse for now. This is for the font sop and the simple shape. For whatever reason, once you come down here, it reverses the normals, so just that's for later on. All right, so what's going on down here is essentially a configure balloon, uh, balloon like so. And you can start with this and get pretty far. 
Um, I've gone ahead and tweaked quite a bit of things just to my personal taste. And again, it really comes down to size and mesh density and all that. So in the cloth here, just to run through, I've set my stiffness to 1000. Uh, rest length is still kept the same. And then I've turned on compression stiffness and that's set to 1000, which is the default. And what that basically does is if you read it, it keeps very stiff, low resolution cloth from uh, becoming unbendable and making sure that everything moves around as, as it should. So it even says down here, cloth, oh my God, it keeps popping off, but cloth that has a higher resolution usually has to have this raised up. So instead of having it off, I just set it to the baseline of 1000. And I find that it comes together a little bit nicer and get some nicer detail in there. And I'm going to turn this off for a minute, not to confuse anyone. And then turn this one off as well. And then this is our pressure that comes in with a Vellum Configure Balloon. And this one is set to kind of a high stiffness of 10,000 and then pumping up that rest length scale to five. And then we go into this awesome, super custom solver called the Vellum Drape. And I'm gonna uncheck this freeze right there. So Vellum Drape is a simplified version of the Vellum Solver specifically for building out uh, cloth geometry and uh, kind of like a, a mini Marvelous Designer. Uh, you, you can totally get results that you can get in Marvelous Designer, uh, quite a bit more work. But if you want to stay in Houdini for your entire pipeline, um, this is basically your little Marvelous Designer. So what this is doing here is initially just nothing. <laughs> you've got to turn on your weld additional seams and it's going to look for seams that you've created to bring together, which is these up here, our front stitch and our rear stitch. You can see it starts drawing these constraints between all those points and nowhere else. So it's kind of, kind of difficult to see. I promise <laughs> if you look in there, uh, there's no constraints in there. It's just where we've selected our points. Uh, the only other thing that I've done is gone into our forces and gravity is usually turned on. Just turn off the, the gravity and turned up our velocity dampen, damping, not dampening, to 0.5 and then just hit play. And this is what we initially get. And it's okay. It kind of looks like uh, a weird flowery ravioli type thing. Not a lot of detail going on in there. And that's where this comes in. I like to adjust our stiffness, or sorry, rest length, to have a little bit more variability between it. So this node here is our bell constraint property. And if we turn this on, it lets you scale your rest length in here just by scaling it. Um, not temporal, so you can't do it over time, but you can come in and just scale it if you need to. But you can also just do a quick VEX expression. So what I've done here, because our constraints are primitives, is throw it on this line right there to work over our primitives of constraints. And I've just named it something like stretch rand. If I click on this and turn this on, you can see I've now multiplied, which I don't really need to do. And so you can just set it. And I've done it with some noise ranging from 0.9 to our maximum value of 1.25. So that, that, what that's going to do is take this rest length scale and multiply it in here against this. So anywhere that it's got 0.9, it's going to shrink down a little bit and make those constraints a little bit tighter. And then anywhere that it is brighter, it will be 0.125, or sorry, 1.25. Um, and it will just stretch those out and give the pressure constraints a little bit more to work with and get some like nice wrinkly details going in there. So if we come back down now and hit play again, you'll see we start to get some nice detailing in there. But if you really wanna see the magic, let's go back and remesh this to a little bit higher density back down to our point. Oh, one. And this is where it gets fun because we get all these extra points in there for this to work with. And now we get those nice wrinkles in there. We even got some like 
random wrinkles in here. And if you let this play long enough, the pressure is going to keep pushing through till it meets like its final resting place. So if you want to leave some extra wrinkles in there, you might want to scroll back a little bit, or you can just let it play out too. But if this is looking good, the nice thing is you can hit save to disk and it'll just save out a quick geometry for you. You can use it wherever you want, or you can even freeze frame it right here. And this freeze frames at frame 20. So that's looking great. So I kind of covered this already with the density. Um, let's take a look at using different shapes too. As I said, it's really important um, just to keep an eye on your shape, your density, the objects you're using and how they can really look quite different. Um, so everything's gonna stay the same. The only thing that we need to do is reverse this down here. So this now looks right on the front and back. I'm gonna leave everything the same and see what we get. And there you go. And so you can see like, looks pretty good. We've got some wrinkles in here, but it's not as dense, even though we left our remesh the same. And it kind of just like, I don't know, the wrinkles are there, but it, it's not as smooth or as pretty. Um, kind of just like, feels like sausage <laughs> casing a little bit in there. So if we come back up and go to our remesh here, even just going down a little bit more and adding just a, a, a tiniest bit more density and hitting play, you'll see we get some of that nice detail back in here. And one thing I really like to do is throw down a vellum post process and use some spatial blur on here. And you'll see it starts to smooth out the spacing in here. Just make those details like really nice and smooth like you would get with a mylar balloon. And then you can also subdivide it as well. Uh, I don't know if you necessarily need to do that. that I kind of like how that looks. Um, yeah, I guess that's all right. And then the last thing I like to do because if we don't turn it on, this is very, very thin, is add just a little bit of thickness. By default, it's all the way up at one, and that starts to feel just a little too dense. So I bring it down to 0.25 and just keeps it having some like real tactile placement um, like you would get in the world. Just, you know, Mylar balloon is definitely aluminum and thin, but when both sides are put together, it does have a little bit of thickness there. And just to go overkill with showing you different objects really matter, let's set up this one. Uh, maybe we'll do 1.5, go a little bit bigger on this. Triangle's fine, we'll keep all that the same. I think we need to keep the reverse from what I remember. Oh, maybe we don't, let's see. Uh, let's try it. <laughs> that, that looks like it sh should be on. It looks like it's also doing that color thing. Again, is there color in here? I'm gonna turn this on just to see. Yeah, okay, so these are reversed. It's kinda kinda weird that when I reverse it here, it goes dark. Maybe that's a weird viewport issue. Anywho, let's see what we get. Come back down to our drape, like so. Everything's nice and procedural, so we don't have to touch anything. And now you can see with this one, like the edges look really thin now. And I feel like we, we need to expand our group a little bit more. Um, it's kind of folding back a bit. And then we're getting all this wrinkling in here now too. It's not really smooth like before. So you might need to go in and change your noise. Uh, sometimes you need to up the pressure too. So I'll try going with like a 10, see if that pushes those areas out and gets them a little bit smoother. Um, also, it could be that because the object is so much bigger, remeshing is based on the size of the object, and maybe we're just getting too much density going on now. Let's, let's bring this back in a bit and hit play again. And we're still getting some wrinkles in there. <laughs> Definitely, like, that pressure is pushing it so hard that it's now, like, blowing in this direction. So as it came together, it's just kind of pushing off there. Uh, it's kind of like Sandra Bullock and gravity, I guess, floating away. So yeah, uh, suffice to say, you just got to play with it sometimes, but these general 
parameters that I said in the beginning here of stiffness and bend and, and vellum constraint and so on and so forth should be a relatively good starting point. Also, you can just start from a vellum balloon configuration and that will get you there as well. Go ahead and switch this back to our flower. Turn off the reverse and run it one more time just to see. And yeah, you can see that that pressure is really bubbling out there when we go back down to our flower, but that's all right. All right, the only other thing that's going on is I got a psych in here like normal, nothing fancy, grid with a bend, UVs, material on there, and then just a custom little aluminum thing I made. So really nothing fancy. You can come in, change your color to whatever you want, crank that metalness, and you're basically good to render as long as you got some nice lights in there. All right, everybody, that's it. Nice quick one today. If you have questions about anything, comments, etc., feel free to leave them below. And if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe as it helps numbers and then it helps more people see these Houdini tutorials, which then gets more people into Houdini, which I would love. Uh, just it's the best. So I appreciate it. All right, everybody, I'll see you in the next one.